With all the controversy surrounding the Fallout franchise and the success of The Outer Worlds, I wouldn't blame you for not wanting to play a Bethesda game right now. However, one thing Bethesda will always have is the masterpiece that is Skyrim. So here is another 10 mods this time, in no particular order, from the last two months to keep you playing Skyrim until the next Elder Scrolls releases in 2077. Alrighty, so the first mod we are going to be having a gander at is Natural Lighting Aesthetica, or NLA for short, by Mahin1. Mahin1 has created a lightweight, PS4 friendly visual overhaul of Skyrim with the objective of creating more natural and realistic aesthetics. The features of the mod include improved lighting, shadows and contrast, more dynamic weather and atmosphere, cleaner and reflective blue water, smoother natural grass in the tundra, smoother skin with subsurface scattering imitation, more trees within cities, improved ambient and thematic audio, and other small visual tweaks. When I loaded up my save after downloading this mod, I legitimately said wow out loud. I don't think I've ever had such an instant reaction to a mod before, and it just shows how good this visual overhaul is. It genuinely makes PS4 Skyrim look incredible. Give it a try and see what you think. The next mod we're looking at is Diverse Creatures and Bosses by Imperial Agent 1992. Actually, the next four mods on this list are all created by Imperial Agent 1992. So does this guy just never sleep or something? He has now released 822 mods at the time of recording this, and it doesn't look like he's slowing down anytime soon. This guy is an absolute mod making machine. Diverse Creatures and Bosses aims to add more diversity by adding some new enemy creatures to the game. After all, they do say that variety is the spice of life. You can encounter these new creatures randomly on roads, mountains, forests, tundras and forts. The new enemies added by the mod are Direwolf, Giant Forest Spriggan, Giant Frost Shock and Flame Archonux, New Named Bandits, Dagon's Dramora, Wolf Packs, Giant Hag Ravens, Spider Guardian, Corrupted Undeads may change form after you kill them and respawn now, and a Giant Bear. Next is IA92's Epic Elemental Werewolf by Imperial Agent. This mod adds a chest full of unique beast form spells with elemental twists. The chest includes the following tomes. Beast form, which is just the vanilla werewolf, however it heals you for 90 points. Werewolf cloak, which makes you invisible for 800 seconds. However, as always, with invisibility in Skyrim, activating an object or attacking will break the spell. Fire Werewolf, which sets you on fire for 180 seconds, meaning enemies in range take 18 points of fire damage per second, and targets on fire take extra damage. The epic version of the Fire Werewolf does the same, however you also rain down flaming rocks from the sky like Alduin does during the final boss fight. Spoiler alert. Shock Werewolf turns you into a Palpatine Werewolf, covering you in electrical energy which does 18 points of damage to health and magicka per second. Epic Shock Werewolf does the same, however it adds in the Stormcall Shout that lasts the full 180 seconds. Ice Werewolf turns you into a very cold dog for 180 seconds, doing 18 damage to health and stamina per second. Epic Ice Werewolf adds a deadly blizzard, turning you into a walking snowstorm that deals 150 damage to health and stamina per second. And finally, the Restoration Werewolf increases your health by 900,000 points, essentially making you immortal. All of these make for fun new ways to play as a werewolf in Skyrim, if you like this mod, give it a try. The fourth mod on this list is IA92's Epic Faction Strongholds by Imperial Agent. Ever wondered why some of the main factions in the game don't have a strong, heavily fortified stronghold out in the field, rather than cooped up in one of the holds? This mod adds in Imperial, Stormcloak, Thalmor, and a Haunted Cemetery stronghold 
very much inspired by the orc strongholds found scattered around Skyrim. These strongholds are basically just little camps in areas of the map associated with those factions that would serve as tactical locations out in the field where members of the faction can rest and gear up before a mission out in the harsh world of Skyrim. You can use their supplies, beds, campfire and sleep in the tents. The mod will soon be updated with more strongholds, including Necromancer, Vampire and Dawnguard. It's a cool little mod that adds some well designed, lore friendly locations to the game. The fifth mod on the list and final Imperial Agents mod is IA92's Epic Glowing Arrows which adds a variety of new arrows to the game that glow different colours. There are 11 new arrows in total and the colours are Light Blue, Dark Blue, Teal, Dark Grey, Green, Orange, Yellow, White, Pink, Purple and Red. The great thing about these arrows is that they are very easy to track down after you fired them and you could even use them to light up a dark tunnel, similarly to how people in movies throw torches down holes to see how deep they are. It's a fun mod that improves the aesthetics of arrows, it's well worth a download if per se you're a vampire that hunts elk at night or something. The next mod is Mysticism, a magic overhaul by Simon Magus 616 The mod's description does an awesome job of explaining this mod. It says, Mysticism is a comprehensive magic overhaul that adds over 200 meticulously balanced spells to the game. These spells are designed to feel like they belong in the world of Skyrim, both mechanically and aesthetically. You can purchase them from vendors, loot them from dungeons, or find them hand placed in carefully chosen locations around the world. Many of these spells reintroduce magical archetypes from previous games or expand the new magical archetypes introduced in Skyrim, such as Sun Magic and Ash Magic. By adding new spells and rebalancing existing spells as part of the same project, Mysticism is able to offer users a coherent and balanced magical experience throughout the early, middle and late game. The features of the mod are Sweeping balance adjustments to vanilla spells Over 200 new spells added to the world Vendor tweaks to add flavour and enhance roleplay Rare spells hand placed around the world Dozens of balance adjustments and bug fixes for vanilla scrolls Almost entirely scriptless, no impact on performance creative use of vanilla assets for high quality, visually interesting effects, a complete rework of master spells that significantly increases their usefulness. This is a large, comprehensive mod that can completely change a mage playthrough of Skyrim, so if you're looking to start a new Magicka based character, give this mod a try. Lady Emberima's Circus of Mirth by Julie Ha adds a fun new location to Solitude in the form of a circus with NPCs, a player home, merchants and trainers. It can be entered via a newly added wall gate inside of Solitude. The NPCs include a few different trainers, a few merchants, some bards and some gladiators. There's a follower that can be found in a secret location that comes with his own unique armour and weapon that looks really cool. There is also a unique armor set spread throughout the circus and some unique enchanted weapons. There are seven different locations, the home of the jester which is your player home featuring weapon racks, containers, planters, crafting stations, mannequins and bookshelves. There's the circus exterior featuring crafting stations, mannequins and bookshelves. The circus entrance which has a barkeeper and a bard. There's the shop of Meridia the Omniscient with crafting stations, two merchants and an archery trainer. Circus Ring which features a merchant and a bard, there's a strange portal that leads to a small quest and a fighting arena which pits you against a combat challenger, rewarding you with a powerful weapon if you succeed. It's an interesting new location with some fun characters, a nice player home and it's a cool location to explore. If you're roleplaying as a bard, this could be a fantastic opportunity to have a great player base with like-minded friends and trainers and an armour and weapon set that suits your profession. Next is Shrinked House of an Unlucky Mage, another mod by Juliha. This mod is very cute. It adds a tiny little mini tree house behind the sleeping giant inn in Riverwood. It's a mage's experiment that allows you to shrink down to a small enough size to use the house as if it was full sized. 
It's equipped with all the crafting stations you need and various furniture and containers. It's well decorated, if a little bit buggy, which hopefully will be patched in future updates, but other than that, it's well designed and makes sense for a mage's home. It would be a good mod to pair with the mysticism mod we covered earlier with your new mage playthrough. The second and only other player home on this list is Alchemist's Basement by Mentha101. It's a beautifully decorated player home with awesome natural plants lighting up the cave, creating a really suitable player home for a nature buff who enjoys picking flowers and creating potions. It has everything you'd need in a player's home, it has plenty of storage, a bed and a bedroll for a follower, crafting and a few alchemy plants. It's also nav meshed for followers. When you consider there are no external assets allowed on PS4, this is an incredibly impressive player home. If you haven't used a load screen mod in Skyrim yet, you must have seen every load screen tip about 10,000 times each, so it's about time to change it up and refresh your loading screens with a brand new look and tips. What better way to do that than replace every loading screen image with a mud crab and change every tip to a fact about mud crabs? It can't be guaranteed that every fact is 100% accurate, However, most of them are funny and give your loading screen a sarcastic and funny new look that will make you actually look forward to loading screens in Skyrim rather than absolutely dread staring at the same tip for the one billionth time. That will take us to the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did please leave a like and if you want to see more of my videos I really would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel. Links to all of the mods covered in this video can be found in the description, so if you can't find them when searching on Skyrim, check the links and add them to your mod library. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook, just search Nayflar to find me, or use the links in the description if you want to follow me. Thank you so much Wayne Savage and Paul Wickland for supporting the channel with a membership, I really do appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one, may Talos guide you.